All right, so we're going to be talking about the law of sines. Now, if you are interested in learning where this formula comes from, if you would just go to Canvas and right here where it says derivation for law of sines, click on that green link. It will take you to a five minute video explaining exactly where the law of sines comes from. So we're going to be dealing with page nine in the packet. And the first problem is actually also number four in your homework. So doing this, we'll get that number four done. You won't have to do it again. And we are simply using this extended proportion, which is known as the law of sines. And it works for any triangle. It does not have to be a right triangle. So the first thing I'm going to do is just draw out the given information. It does not have to be drawn to scale, but Angle B is 101, which does happen to be obtuse, so I'm making that up the top. So here's angle B. Now, it doesn't matter where I put angle C and where I put angle A. So I'm just going to put those somewhere. And then little a is 9, which is opposite angle A. So that's going to go here. So the only thing they're asking for is little c. Well, I know little c is opposite angle c. So I'm going to just set up using the law of sines, and if you look, when I can use the law of sines is when I have a known length and a known given angle. Now, in this problem, the opposite angle from the given length 9 is angle A. I can actually find that angle. If they add up to 180 degrees, I can just simply do 180 minus 101 minus 63. So that's going to be 16 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and put 16 degrees here. Now, this is called a match. As soon as you have a known given length and its opposite angle measure, that's what I call a match, which means I can go ahead and use the law of sines. Now, when I write down my formula, it is not going to contain all three ratios. It is only going to contain the ratios that I need in order to find little c. So I know that angle A is 16 and little a is 9. So I'm going to start with that 9, little a, over the sine of angle A, which is the sine of 16, is equal to, well, I want to find little c. So that's going to go on the top over the sine of 63. So that's it. I don't need to use um, angle B and they're not asking me to find little b. So this is my proportion. I will just cross multiply to find C. So when I do that, I will multiply diagonally. So I'm going to write down C is equal to, so I'm going to do 9 times the sine of 63. And then when I multiply diagonally here, I know I'm going to have to divide by what's being multiplied by C. So I kind of do that all in one step. And this is what I'm actually going to plug into the calculator. So let's see if my calculator is in degree mode because it's really important that it's in the correct mode. And it is. So it's in degree mode. Um, I am going to go ahead and just maybe make the calculator. Um, a little bit lighter so you can see it because sometimes it's not really highlighted enough all right so let's see if that works okay so I'm gonna put I'm gonna do alpha y equals and hit enter and in the numerator I'm gonna just type in 9 sine 63 and then in the denominator the sine of 16 and then hit enter so if it's asking me to round, I'm going to round all lengths to the nearest um, tenth. So let's do that. So that means little c is about 29 point. Now since it says 0, 9, that 9 is going to make this round to a 1 in the tenths place. And that is my answer for number 1. All right, so this is example number 2 on page 9. Now this is also number six in your homework. So this, doing this problem, you will not have to redo number six. So we're going to again just draw this out. 
does not have to be drawn to scale. Um, angle A is 88 degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and put that on the top. And it doesn't matter where I put B and C. So little b is 16.1, little a is 26, and little c is 21. So I want to find angle c because that's a capital C. So in order to do that, I need to, first of all, I need to have a match. So that means a given length and it's given opposite angle, which I have. So this again tells me I can use that law of signs. So I am going to start off first by writing 26 in the numerator. That's the length over the sine of 88 degrees. And that's going to go in the denominator. And that's going to equal, well, I want to find angle C. So I'm going to put little c, that length on the top, over the sine of angle C in the denominator. So again, I'm going to cross multiply. Now this one is going to involve a couple steps because when you cross multiply, when I solve for angle C, it's actually the sine C. So I'm going to multiply diagonally here so I get 21 sine 88. And then when I multiply here diagonally, I know I'm going to have to divide both sides by 26. Now at this point, I have sine C. I do not have angle C. In order to get the angle, I have to do the inverse of this ratio. So what I'm going to put in the calculator is going to be this. So we're going to round to the nearest minute. So all lengths will go nearest tenth and all angles will do nearest minute. So let's see what that looks like in the calculator. So I'm going to do second sign and then alpha y equals and then in the numerator 21 sine 88. And in the denominator, I'm going to do, oops, that's not an 88. Let me fix that. In the denominator, 26. So when I press enter, I want nearest minute. So that means I'm going to have to do second, apps, and four for DMS. So it looks like because the seconds is not 30 or more, this is going to be 53 degrees and 49 minutes. So I am simply just going to put that here and I will write the answer next to it here. So C is about 53 degrees and 49 minutes. All right, so hopefully you uh, can see that the law of signs is actually pretty easy. All right, let's go to example number three. Um, now this one says solve triangle ABC. So that means we have to find all the missing lengths and angles. And we're going to round the angles to the nearest minute and the side to the nearest tenth. Well, they're giving me two of the angles. So that means I can find this third angle because I know that all three angles add up to 180. So I want you to pause the video and see if you can come up with angle C on your own. Okay, well, I am hoping that you got angle C to be 90 degrees and 6 minutes. Now, I just used the calculator to do that. And I simply just put in those values and subtracted from 180. So that's how I was able to get angle C. So 90 degrees, 6 minutes. Now I'm going to try to find A, little a, and little b. So I'm going to do this because I have a match. The match is going to be the 14.3 and the angle opposite. So I'm going to set up my proportion using that twice. 14.3 over the sine, don't forget sine, of 90 degrees 6 minutes. That is going to equal little a over the sine of 32 degrees 14 minutes. Now over here I'm going to do the same thing, same setup, but this time I want to solve for little b. So little b is going to be over the sine of 57 degrees, 40 minutes. So this is just a matter of cross multiplying and then putting this into the calculator and rounding to the nearest tenth. So let's see what a is going to be. So when I multiply diagonally, that's going to be 14.3 times the sine of 32 degrees, 14 minutes, divided by, I'm going to go ahead and, 
cross multiply, and I know I'm going to have to divide by the sine of 90 degrees 6 minutes. Now over here, when I cross multiply, I'm going to be multiplying 14.3 by the sine of 57 degrees 40 minutes. And then I'm going to have to divide by what's being multiplied by B, which is the sine of 90 degrees 6 minutes. So hopefully you can put that in the calculator and come up with the answer. All right, so you may want to pause the video and put that in your calculator. And of course, guys, make sure you have all this written down so you can get credit for this when I check it. Um, when I went ahead and put this in the calculator, here's what I got. I'm just going to paste it on the screen. Um, I got A to B about 7.6. And let's see what that looks like on my screen. I'm just going to try to move that down a little bit. Okay, so you can see what I typed in. This is A, and this is what I got. So I'm thinking A is about 7.6 when I round to the 10th. And then B, this is what I typed in for B, and that is about 12.1 rounded to the 10th. So that is basically what I got for all three answers in number three. So I think that you should be able to do um, page, the very top of page 11. So you want to do the top of page 11. And again, it says finish because two of those problems were identical to the first two that we did in this video. So just finish those 10. If you need more room, always just do this on a separate sheet because you will have to show work. And what does work mean? Well, your trig equations and things like that. So just make sure you show the setup and what you're putting in the calculator to receive credit. So hopefully that helped and that shouldn't be too hard. And just make sure you check your answers with mine on Canvas. Thank you.